Good morning, church. Coffee hasn't kicked in yet. Well, good morning, church. We are Medina United Church of Christ Congregational, and no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. My friends, I know the coffee hasn't kicked in, but if this doesn't make you excited, it's Senior Graduate Sunday. We have two sacraments this Sunday, baptism and communion. We have some hard words in the gospel. It's an exciting time. It's, I'm so thankful you've chosen to be here, whether live or live stream. So wherever you are in time and space, you've made the right decision. Thanks for being the church. Welcome to this Sunday. It's August, I guess. Our kids are like, eh, the countdown has begun. Our college students are like, yay, we're time, it's time to go. So there's, there's a mixed emotion, but wherever you are and however you're arriving in this space, know that peace is to be had if you just take a moment to breathe. So let's do that together. I invite you to, to settle down into your pew, lengthen, drop your shoulders away from your ears, chin up a little bit. You got this. Your powerful pose. You can just sit here all day. You're supported. You're right where you need to be. Take a deep breath in together. In and out. Whoa, that was a long pause between breaths. How have you been going through your whole week with such shallow breathing? Maybe. Maybe. Let's take another deep breath in. And out. One more. In and out with a sigh. <sighs> a prayer of Ruach, a prayer of God's Spirit within and among us even now. A prayer of peace, so put a symbol of peace over your heart. Calm those nerves, that galloping heart rate if you happen to be baptized. It's okay, it's okay to be nervous. It's also okay to lift your support one to another to your neighbor and say, Hey, neighbor. Glad you're here. Peace be with you. Let us stand and sing our opening hymn together.
in our call to worship. God, we already have more than enough division on earth. We don't need any more. We are divided socially, racially, economically, politically, religiously, in the workplace, in our schools. Help us interpret what you're saying to us today. How growth comes from the result of division at the cellular level and beyond. Help us see the division you're talking about as growth for us. Thanks be to you, our Christ, our spirit. One God forever and ever. Every song has a story. This song is a poem that has been set to music. It expands on one line about faith from the New Testament letter of James, Jesus' brother. It is one of a hundred poems written by a remarkable woman, woman who was crippled and bedridden virtually her whole adult life with severe arthritis. This was way back in the early 1900s when there were no effective treatments. He gives us more grace as our burdens grow greater. He sends us more strength as our labors increase. To added afflictions, he adds his great mercy. To multiply trials, he multiplies peace. Exhausted our store of endurance when our strength has failed ere the day is half done. When we reach the end of our hoarded resources, our Father's full giving has only begun. Fear not, let your need shall exceed his provision. Our God ever yearns his resources to share. Lean hard on the arm everlasting, availing, the Father will bear up both you and your cares. His love has no limits. His grace has no measure, His power no boundary known unto men. For out of His infinite riches in Jesus, He blesses and blesses and blesses again. Our scripture lesson this morning comes to us from the 12th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, verses 49 to 56 which can be found in the Pew Bible on page 71 of the New Testament. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. 
I have a baptism with which to be baptized and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will divide it, be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? I invite the children to come forward. Hi, Emily. Oh, did you bring a troll? Oh, she's so cute. She's so cute. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Are we getting excited for school? Yeah. Oh, that was an enthusiastic, yeah, I like to hear it. Yeah. Oh, yay. What? Yes. Yeah. Except for lockers, yeah. Sometimes that can be a little stressful, huh? Do I have enough room? Do I have to share with somebody? All that fun stuff. Yeah. Well, today is a special day because I'm going to talk about a few big kids. And what the crazy thing is is I remember when they were your size, when they were your age. And now they're getting ready to go to college. And they're probably super excited because this is going to be a whole new experience. Maybe a little nerves, kind of like us on our first day, right? Have a little bit of nerves, whole new year, maybe different friends in our class. Or maybe you're just plain out excited, right? No idea what college even looks like. No idea what college even looks like. I know. You have a long time. <laughs> yeah. Rooms and lights. That's all I can... Yep, lots of rooms, lots of lights. I know. It's, and it seems far away, doesn't it? But it will be here in the blink of an eye, which is crazy. I know, don't remind you. I don't want to push you guys any faster. But for me, I've known these kids since they've been your age. I've known one of them since he was a baby. And the other is very, very young. What? I have my red and white. And I love them. So, you guys can sit here, and I'm going to invite them to come forward so I can talk a little bit about them, okay? And then after that, Pastor Luke will say a prayer for him, and then we'll say the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll go downstairs. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay. And I want water on my head. And you want water on your head. Well, we'll talk to Pastor Luke about that. Okay. <laughs> so, if I could have Max and Peyton and Andrew come up. Here come the big kids. I am sure they're kids. They're kids to me. They're young adults. You are correct. But it's kind of like once you're my kids, you're always my kids. All right, so we had seven graduates this year, and four of them couldn't be here, so I just wanted to mention them. Um, we have lots of engineers in this group. Yeah, yeah which is awesome. So we have Zach Rosen, um, grandson of Barb Rosen, who is going to Baldwin-Wallace. And Ella White will be going to Miami with Max. Not, I mean, they're going to the same school. Um, she's going to study psychology. And Abby Acurio is going to go to OU, along with Brendan Burdick. And they're both going to study engineering. So they'll probably have some classes together. Your father's an engineer, too? Super cool. I know we've got some engineers in here. Yeah. So you're going to be an engineer? That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, when you... Yeah, when you get big like these kids, maybe they can give you some advice, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so this is always a bittersweet day for me, and I'm sure for parents as well, um, because we get to talk about how proud we are of you guys, um, but know that 
you're going to be leaving us. I mean, not leaving us forever. You'll come back and visit us, obviously, on holidays and stuff. But we're not going to see them every Sunday because they're going to be away at school. And they're going to be doing all kinds of new adventures and making friends and having new experiences. And that's going to be amazing. And we're just so proud of you guys. And Max, I mean, I've known you forever. And story about Max is I, I've never had this effect on kids, but he would be screaming in the nursery and I would go down to like take care of him and he would just scream harder. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And then what the strangest thing was is that Matt was the only one that could calm him down. He would go in the nursery <laughs> and he just, Matt was like, I don't know, this presence for him. So obviously we've outgrown that, right, Max? I don't know. <laughs> I know, but I've, I've, I've known Max forever and he's just an incredible, incredible young man um, who's gonna do amazing things. And Andrew, I've known you forever too, and lots of memories I could share too, but the one I'm going to share is the hairspray the, for VBS that was forever stuck on our, we had crazy hair day, and he brought his, you know, hair color, and I'm like, what is that orange on the wall? Well, we got a little carried away with our hair color, so we had stains in the community room, and they were there for a long time, not anymore, but they were there for a long time, and Peyton... My first memory of you was when I came back from a confirmation retreat, and I was a hot mess. I mean, I was, you know what it's like coming home from confirmation retreat, right? You know, no makeup and everything. And you and your sister stopped me and basically interviewed me. Like, why should we come to this church? What are you going to do? What kind of fun things? I'm like, okay, this is like awesome. So these kids, we have done mission trips together. We have laughed together. We have cried together. We have played together. We ha it's just been an amazing time. And I can't believe that I'm standing here looking at you as seniors. Um, but I know that you guys are going to do great things, dream big, chase those dreams, go change the world. We need you guys. We need your leadership. Um, and I'm going to miss you like crazy, but I know that this is not goodbye. This is just see you later and then come back and visit us, all right, whenever you can. Plus, I got your phone number, so I'll be texting and keeping in touch with you guys, okay? So we love you. So we have little gifts here for you. So Andrew's going to Akron. Fear the Rue, that's my alma mater, yep, for engineering, and Max is going to Miami for engineering, yes, and Peyton is going to Cincinnati for engineering, yes, so future engineers here, so we love you, we're so proud of you, and never forget, you've got all these people here, they're a family, they're here for you, whatever you need, all right, and make sure you come back to visit us, we love you. You guys are so big. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, let us gather in a spirit of prayer. And when prompted, you have a part in this prayer, too. You'll know it when you hear it. Let us pray. Holy One, we ask your blessing on our graduates to where they will go, reminded of the roots that they have here, the family they have whenever they need it, the mentors, the friends, the peers, this church. So we recall the promises we made to them at their baptism and confirmation. We recall it now. As the church says, we promise our love, our support, and our care, as it was then, is now, and forever shall be. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let us all say the prayer our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, friends, you can head on down to the vibes.
gather now our joys and concerns and everything in between. We lift up uh, Kevin Swantek home from the hospital. What they were thinking was long haul COVID turned out to be an allergic reaction, we think. Because often, as Kevin said in the medical world, if it looks like a horse, gallops like a horse, neighs like a horse, it could be a zebra. <laughs> Turns out it was a zebra. So, hey, let's see what happens. We also lift up uh, Lori and Dave, uh, or Dave and Lori Ciola Glover with an upper respiratory infection post COVID, both recovering, but Lori has a little bit more way to go, so we lift them up worshiping from home on our live stream. We lift up a cousin of Joyce Halter, Nancy Corrigan, who has entered hospice care. We lift up Josh Fry's mom and her husband mourning a death in their family. For the friend of the Schaefer's, to, to Telestai, the Petrick family, Maury, who happened, he was on the news as he was murdered up in Seven Hills. So a big blow to the to Telestai community and family as they're mourning this shocking death. Stu Jones also mourns his friend John, who has died. He is also, we pray for Stu as he's traveling down to Columbus to advocate for Medicare and uh, traumatic brain injuries to a few state senators. So blessings to his work and travel there. For Hannah Magram, whose niece, Susan, has passed away from COVID, we were praying for her since June. She's been in ICU since then, and uh, she, uh, she has died. So prayers for all who mourn and all who are mourning all of our losses, including the division in this country. So we pray for our leaders, our first responders, our nation, for our military, knowing that through their service, we're not as bad as we could be and through our efforts in supporting them, we can still yet manage a more perfect union. We lift up our birthdays, celebrating today as Bert Humpel, Josh Swantek, and Julia Black. Then throughout the week, we have Mary Grace York, Jim Evans, Betty Zarney celebrates 100 years. Yay for Betty. The flowers on our communion table are in her honor from Deb and her family. Rita Anderson, Whitney Bixler, Judy Gorsuch, Harry, Harold Sickles, Kevin Swantek, Pam Branscombe, Mike Andrews, Val Servanek, Sadie Stevenson, Kristen Zabrowski, Chuck Rim, Ginny Hall, Alice Metzloff, and Grant Bixler round out the week. There's a lot of birthdays happening. And three anniversaries that we lift up for Karen and Terry Yancer, Tom and Nikki Alavalon, and Tom and Ann Usher. Many more years of wedded bliss and hard work of communication be with you all. We lift up Lindsay English, who will be joining us in baptism as well as a full member of our church. Our staff retreat featured Jenny Cochran, our new music director, whom you will meet in uh, our Live on the Square. Her band will be featured with permission of the gathering band. Her band will take the stage and lead us in worship on that exciting worship at the end of this month. So uh, she is really exciting. And if you think back to our colors of communication, she's all yellow. She's all idea and energy, and it's exciting to be on staff with her. We lift up our seniors, those college bound, those heading to trade schools, into careers, into the military, and our engineering corps who have joined us with the with us today. While I question uh, the choice of Miami there, young Gabrielson, the people who go to Miami seem to really love it. So blessings to, to you. Never graduate is what I'm saying. I also lift up our county fair, all that noise we heard at night from the concerts and the roar of engines, the squeal of pigs, and all the placement of the 4-H. Uh, blessings to the county fair. Blessings to our mission team and Operation Homes as we learned all about that on Thursday night and Saturday morning. Blessed to have Bruce Turner with us to answer any questions and tell stories of what is expected of us. And for all that you happen to carry, joys or concerns or something you're not sure of, whatever you're bringing into this space, know that God hears it and blesses it and can help. And if you would like it added to our prayer list, see me after worship. Friends, let us join one another in a spirit of prayer. Holy One, we come to you divided in heart and mind. 
We seek unity, but often on our terms. If those jerks over there just would conform to our way of thinking, the world would be better, is such a temptation. But you come to us this day saying, there will be division. And yet also, we stand here with our two sacraments showing that unity comes in surprising places and from surprising people. That we ourselves can be reunited with Red Hawks in our college rivals, that we can be united across party lines, gender lines, orientations, and through all people. The fullness of your creation, O oh Lord, we seek to enter into, knowing that you have blessed it and called it good. We pray this in the name of our Creator, our Sustainer, our Redeemer, one God over us all. Amen. Jesus said, unless you are born anew, we cannot see the reign of God. Unless we are born of water and the Spirit, we cannot enter God's new order. Paul and the apostles said, those who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We, therefore, are buried with Christ by baptism into death so that we are also raised into new life for the glory of God, that we might, too, walk in the fullness of the resurrection. Baptism is a sacrament through which we are united to Jesus Christ and given part in Christ's ministry of reconciliation. It is a visible sign of the invisible element of the reconciliation of people to God and neighbor to neighbor. It shows that death itself and the rising into life of obedience and praise is required. It shows us that the pouring out of the Holy Spirit is on all God's people. In baptism, God works to us in us to the power of forgiveness and the renewal of spirit and the call to be God's people always. So I invite forward in this moment our new friend who has been with us on live stream and is a friend of our own St. Alan Parkhurst. Forward at this time, Lindsay, would you please come forward? few questions to ask of you that we ask all of our new members and even our confirmands will hear these words as familiar. Lindsley, do you desire to be baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I do. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please say, I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, please say, I do. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. And finally, do you promise according to the grace given you to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of this body of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world. If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. Congregation, Jesus Christ invites us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them to the gift of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to the one about to be baptized as she lives and grows in Christ. We promise our love and support and our care. My friends, you are all on the hook now for Lindsay. And Lindsay, we have your back. Come what may, as we know, you have ours. So let us unite in the church of all times and places, confessing our faith in the triune God, that we believe in God. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in in the Holy Spirit, and in this moment we know that this, in faith, is the water of baptism. How our ancestors in faith came through the Red Sea and through the River Jordan to which Christ was baptized, showing unity and solidarity with all people. And so we know that while this wasn't done in the full immersion way in the Jordan that Jesus was, we witness to it as best we are able. 
uniting in the Spirit, for I may baptize you with water, but the one who comes after me will baptize you with fire. Lindsay, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Welcome to this faith and family and new life in Christ. Church, please welcome. And here is proof. Our very hard to get uh, name tag that you can proudly wear and two documents saying, hey, I'm baptized and I am a member of these fine people. Blessings. Church, if we were to interview potential messiahs, we more than likely wouldn't hire the one that said, I come to bring division. Jesus doesn't really care about that, though. He doesn't get an interview. He doesn't care about poll numbers. He's not here for our peace. He tells us today he has a vision that's going to divide us from those whom we love. He sees something that is as apparent as when we see dark clouds in the west and we say, it's probably going to storm. It's that apparent to Christ. But the type of division Jesus is talking about is not division for division's sake. It's division with a purpose. It's a division I understand. For I was once home from college for a long weekend. My mom, my sister, her then boyfriend and I went to the Texas Roadhouse for steak and the boyfriend asks, so what are you learning at that fancy college? Well, I was really excited about my Native American history class that semester, so I told him about what the Native perspective was in our history. Here they take the say, here are these invaders who are coming into their land thinking that they can own land. That's a concept alien to First Nation people. The land is the land. It's owned by everyone and no one at the same time. I learned in that class the tragedy of broken promise, the tragedy of white supremacy calling entire peoples savages, savages who happen to have lived here much longer than we have and know how to live off the land and had sustainable practices, how we lost generations of wisdom on how to grow and hunt and when to grow and hunt and when to move on and where exactly to move let alone the loss of culture and story and dance and music. I told the truth to that question, which was my first mistake. Because I looked up and saw the look on my mom's face who says, I'm going to need a stronger drink. And the look on the boyfriend's face who was red in the face, angry. He could not accept what I said to him. It was a counter to everything he was taught and raised with. So he launched into how I was a know-nothing college boy and I was wrong and I was just flabbergasted like, where am I right now? My new knowledge was not welcome. This perspective never even considered for a hot second from a guy who loved John Wayne and all the Westerns. But when confronted with history that didn't come from the silver screen, he yelled and screamed, his brain scrambled. The rest of the dinner I think was miserable. I don't remember. The steak was okay, I think. But what was new for me in that moment is that I didn't back down. I normally would have. But I knew what I knew. The boyfriend hadn't read the books I had. He hadn't listened to the First Nation folk come into class and speak of their lives and history, their experiences on the reservation. I guess I was divided then in that moment. Mom's boyfriend against son. And I may have been right on history, but I've learned that I was wrong on how I presented it. I had to learn how to talk so that my mom and her boyfriend could hear it and celebrate what I was learning. And I failed that first time, and it hurt. Yet, it was necessary for my growth as a person. The growth that happens in college as you're out from the, under the care of your parents to becoming an independent young adult. And part of that is knowing what you know and standing for it. For there are times in my life where I learned something that I didn't want to know. Take, for example, 
all of seminary. <laughs> when you learn what's really actually there instead of like what the pop theology says is there, it's an entirely different book. It's a whole different thing. So when I learned that I'm not the good Samaritan, I'm the dude in the ditch, that hurt. That's different from what I've often been taught. We want to see ourselves as the helper, the, the hand up, out, the healer. But that's not what first century ears would have heard it being as. We would have been the guy in the ditch. So when one pastor friend preached on this sermon a few weeks back, a congregant came up and said, well, what about Putin? Would you pull Vladimir Putin from the ditch? And she calmly said, no, you misunderstand. Putin is pulling you from the ditch. Ouch. How do we handle that? That's an unwelcome perspective that I didn't need to know. But that's what parables do. They are strategic strikes on our assumptions where we have to learn or consider and be different after hearing those stories. And they can hurt. Learning can hurt. Experiences can hurt. We heard hurt from Julie, who spoke to you from three Sundays ago about her civil rights pilgrimage. She spoke of what she learned and the pain in that learning and in our history. In her story, we learned how Julie needed to set aside some things she learned down in Texas because maybe the past wasn't the full story that she was raised with. She had to divide from it because it was either wrong or there was another perspective to consider. She learned that black history is American history, and there is no difference. And we can learn from it, celebrate it, and be better neighbors to our black and brown kin and all the experiences of what their skin color is, going through all the gifts, the tragedy, the hurt, and our own ignorance. Two Sundays ago, Ryan Collins did the same thing. He told how growing up he was a delight to have in class but wasn't living up to his potential. He internalized this message and he felt like a failure up until two years ago, last year, where he realized he wasn't living up to his potential because his brain couldn't manufacture the chemicals needed to help him reach his potential. So it's been a long journey for Ryan. He's had to divide from himself, from his old self, and from those messages. And he sought help with his depression. He's learning how to live with ADHD. And he told it how meaningful it is to have a community that supports this, that says, go get therapy. Everybody needs it, everyone here. And if you need that extra help of helping those chemicals that your body physically can't produce, please, you are blessed to go get those. It's not a failure on your part. I believe we all have stories of growth through division. We are not the same people we once were, and being the same person you were in high school is okay if you're in high school. For anybody over the age of 22, it's just sad, okay? You've got to grow, you've got to divide yourself from your parents, from your past self. Yes, even from people in your life. Division isn't always bad. Division is a natural part of life. Division is how things grow. Cells divide and multiply. That's how we get taller, stronger, faster. Trees have branches. That's through division. I believe all of us have these stories of how we grew through division, and I would love to hear of that time in your life where you did the hard work. You went through the valley of the shadow of death, and you came out the other side more fully yourself. Maybe it was a time in your adolescence, high school or college. I look at our strong graduates heading off to college. They were just in confirmation. How did this happen? And yet here you are. And I'm sure all of you can write a book on how your parents don't know anything. And I'm sure your parents could write the same book of when they were your age and your grandparents and the parents before that. Maybe our time of division came in our adolescence or college trip. Maybe it came just after your first fight as newlyweds. Because learning how to live with someone is tough and requires a lot of compromise. Maybe it was your job. You were promoted. Your training and habits that you had before weren't working and you were called out for it in your yearly review. You had to go and get the training. And so you learned and you grew. And now look at you. 
Or maybe you learned and you grew and you realized, oh, I need to find a different place to work. <laughs> I've outgrown this place or this friendship or whatever it is. Maybe it was your teenage years where you felt divided from your parents. And maybe later you reconciled and maybe you're still waiting. And that opportunity will present itself after this life is over. But all of this is part of growing up. We're in a divided time now, but it's not a healthy division. It's division for division's sake on the national political scene. One group says this, the other group says that. There's no compromise. Bipartisanship is punished. And there are even talking heads on the outrage machines of cable news outlets and Twitter saying that folks of different political persuasions can't be friends or even be married. We know that's not healthy, nor we know that is not true. For we know and love our neighbors and spouses of different political persuasion, unless they're cult-like fanatics, we can get along for the most part. And yes, we'll get into conflicts occasionally, and we'll learn what not to talk about at a table at Texas Roadhouse, or we'll learn how to talk about it without devolving into yelling and calling each other names. Because I think that's the kingdom of God, is learning how to be at the table, especially when you disagree, or you're saying, oh, I never considered that perspective. For me, there are some things I have to cut out. I have to cut out leading the church I know and learn how to pilot a new church that is yet to be invented. I've told you in my sermons, detailed in my thesis, how the aberrant time is ending and how church has changed. Now I personally have to do the work to change my leadership. I have to learn how to lead our church for growth. And I'll have to divide myself from old practices, get a new bag of tricks, or just forgo a bag of tricks altogether. And I'll have to, as will our staff. We're adding new folks to our staff. Our music director, Jenny Cochran. You'll meet her live on the Square Worship. Some of you have already met her and are like, whoa, yeah, this is different. This is going to be fun. Kathy's got to up her playing. We've got to learn some percussive jazz stuff. And uh, she's not trained for that. She's, she's got her own style we're happy in. Don't, no thanks for change. Just like my own leadership. No thanks for change. I'm leading just fine. Look at all you. This is fun. We're having a great time together. But we, are we? I think so. But there are new things I can listen to and learn from you and you from me. And likewise, we grow the kingdom of God like that. And these will require growth and change and, yes, some division for us to become whom God is shaping us to be. But all is not lost. We have picked our guiding Bible verse for the year, at least for the staff, and I present it to you. We have stole it from Lakewood United Church of Christ, who said, you can't steal it, it's in the Bible. <laughs> but we think it's a good idea for this next year this guiding verse that comes to us from the prophet Jeremiah, verse 17, verses 7 through 8. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in God. For they will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. So we will be like the tree planted by the water. We will be both rooted and generative. We will be rooted in our heritage, in you, our people, who have joined us here in our history that is 203 years young. But it's not enough just to be rooted. We must be generative and produce leaves and shade and foliage and fruit, fruit, of food for the hungry and shelter for the stranger and a welcome to the outcast. And we must be divided as well. We might have our own ideas and assumptions about why people are hungry or why they're without shelter or why these folks are outcast in the first place. But we must learn, as I have learned, how to divide myself from these assumptions and listen to the stories of those who are right in front of me. 
for, you'll find it harder to say, you're poor because you don't want to work to someone who is working three part-time jobs and still can't make ends meet. That's the type of division Jesus comes to bring, to divide us from the false narratives that keep us safe and our neighbor languishing. For growth requires division, and sometimes it's a joyful division, sometimes it's painful, but it's meant to be generative, fruit-producing. It's not division for division's sake. That's the way of the world. This is division with a purpose. So I'm thankful for Jesus' words today. I'm glad we didn't have to interview him. He's not the Messiah we want. The Messiah we want would tell us, oh, you're just great. Just work harder. You'll get that new car. Pray. You'll get that promotion. No change on your part required for that six-figure salary that you want. The world will change to you. Nope. That's the Messiah we want. But that's not the Jesus we get. Jesus divides us from such temptations, brings fire to the earth, growth for us, growth for more love, less hate, more listening, less judgment, more generosity, less greed, more openness, less tribalism, and dingling rivalries. We each are growing in our own way. And yes, this will divide us from some, yet it will unite us with the ground and source of our being, our God, our Christ, the spirit of us all, one God forever and ever. And therefore, this type of division is not a bad thing. Thanks be to God. Amen. seated, know that you are now seated at the table of Christ. Not Luke's table, not Medina UCC's table, not the United Church of Christ's table, but the table of our Lord and Savior who didn't do it like this. And that's okay. This is a sign and symbol pointing back to that upper room where he gathered with his friends. He washed their feet and he fed them and led them in prayer and asked God to bless them, knowing what they would do. So you, my friends, no matter where you are on life's journey, freshly baptized, still waiting, remembering your confirmation, never had one, no matter where you are on your journey, know that no label matters at this table. No political label, no label given to you by anyone, whether well-meaning or otherwise. 
This table is yours, and you are seated at it now. Our ushers will be around to bring the good news to you as apostles. You receive it without having to do anything. It comes to you, the bread, gluten-free. And if you're a little bit nervous about that, I'm sure we can get the packaged ones. If you're like, I don't know if that's really gluten-free. It is. And by the way, if you can eat gluten, you can also eat this. You're not going to poof out of existence. You're going to be fine. This table is one of radical welcome. So set aside all that you know and remember on the night he was given up, he took the bread, he blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body broken for you, divided for you. Take and eat. And likewise, he took the cup and after blessing it and pouring it, he gave it to his friends, saying, This is the cup of my blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant has been shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. When you do this, do so in remembrance of me. And so we pray. Christ, we remember. We humbly ask that you send your spirit among this sign and this sacrament. We can taste and see that you are good in this world you have called good and we you have called very good. Even though we put you through what we put you, you still came through for us, offering us grace beyond our understanding, a peace that surpasses all understanding. And how somehow when two or three are gathered, you are with us now. May we remember and enter into this fullness as your people, as your church. In thanksgiving to you, our God, our Christ, our Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. With the ushers, please come forward. church we raise the bread and say this is the bread we are the body take and eat
friends, let's raise our cup and say, this is the cup. We are the covenant. Take and drink. join our spirits in prayer. Holy One, we thank you for this time and testimony to unity that you bring across all lines we could draw and divide ourselves from you and for one another. Your table stands above it all. Thanks be to you, our Creator, Christ, and Redeemer, one God forevermore. And the church says, a hearty amen. Good enough. Luke 12, 34, informs us, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let our hearts direct the use of our resources, our time, and our talents. May our generosity meet God's abundance in attending to the needs and hopes of our community. Please rise and join in the doxology. We have uh, cut Cooking for Cups open, some dates open in the fall. We have a library, some new books down there as you're heading out towards the parking lot. It's to your left. Check out a book or two or four. It's awesome. It's good stuff. We're also looking for people to serve on a musical support team now that we have our music director identified and hired. 
We're also looking to support her ministry among us, so please call the office if you're interested or have questions. But most of all, please join me in the benediction. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let, let us lay aside, aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, that, clings, that we cling to because we have falsely put identity in it, and, and not in you, in you our, our creator and ground of our being, being, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who set, set aside, aside all, all identity, identity on the cross, cross disregarding its shame, blesses you to be a blessing. We, we will, will go, go and tend the fire Christ, Christ has, started. has started. Go, for this service is ended, and our service now begins. Amen. Amen.